hello learners and welcome to my session on planning for progress participation and resource use well my name is Russell D'Souza and I am from Nirmala Institute of Education Goa let us have a look at the structure the structure goes this way it begins with students participation in learning followed by how do we involve them and the third one is a KWL structure that I will be talking to you of. Now, if you look at the very title of the session, it talks about progress, it talks about participation, and it talks about the use of resources. Well, what I want to say at this point of time is that we need to involve our learners in planning, and if we involve our learners in planning, there will be progress. And so, Involve students in learning and you will see them bloom. This means that we as teachers need to encourage, involve our students in the entire process of learning. I know it may be difficult. You as teachers may say that we are working with, with, with children who are 5, 6, 7, 8 years old. But trust me, these children are extremely, extremely creative. You'll be surprised if I tell you that when NASA was planning its space mission, they visited all the kindergarten schools. And the number of questions and the type of questions that the children asked the scientists actually helped the NASA mission. This is sufficient enough to tell us that our children are potential learners. They are very curious. So, what do we mean by participation of students in planning? Well, if we as teachers will look through a very clear lens at our classrooms, you will see your own practice as a teacher and at the same time, you will also look at the learner very objectively. So, this exercise of us would critically reveal a wealth of information for us as teachers. Let us consider an illustration. We as teachers we love to teach. Whenever, wherever, we love to teach. And so as a teacher, look at the left-hand column. It says, what do I teach about seeds? Why do I teach about germination of seeds? How do I teach about conditions needed for proper growth of plants? When do I get students to actually experience the wonder of germination? by creating a patch in the school garden. So these are nothing but my objectives of teaching. These are my instructional objectives. So what do I teach about seeds? Why do I teach about germination of seeds? So as a teacher, I'm very clear of what I want to teach. But the million dollar question is, does my learner know this? Is my learner aware why he is learning about germination of seeds? Probably he has no idea. And so, let me take you a step further and introduce another label here, and that is learn. I teach and my students learn. So, if you start reading the, the two together, then it would go this way. What do I teach about seeds? And the learner says, what do I learn about seeds? Why do I teach about germination of seeds? And the learner says, why do I learn about germination of seeds? The teacher says, how do I teach about conditions needed for proper growth of plants? And on the other side, the learner says, how do I learn about conditions needed for proper growth of plants? And so if you look very carefully, the learner is now aware of what he is learning, why he is learning. So the purpose of his learning is very, very clear to him. And so as teachers, we need to ensure that the learner knows why he is learning something. If you do not look at why he is learning something, then we are in for trouble. Let's take another example. So we teach students about maps. What idea of maps? So. The learner has a question, a rational question, and he'll ask you, why should I learn about a map? How is it going to benefit me? 
Is there a need for me to learn about maps? Am I using these maps in my real life? Yes, we make use of maps in our real life. Today we use our GPS navigation systems. And when a child travels in a car, he, in most cars, of course, you would find a GPS navigation system. So there's a relationship between what we teach and what we learn. So what does this tell us? It tells us that there must be a congruence, a going together between what is taught and what is learned. So the gaps that we sometimes see in learning is because the learner is not aware of the reason why he or she is learning what is being taught. So hence the need to make the learner aware of what, when, why, who, how and where of what he or she is going to learn. So this tells us again that we need to involve our learners completely in the process of learning. We cannot say that our learners are not capable without testing the capability of our learners to be involved in planning the whole process of learning. I know of teachers who have done it and who are doing it and you will not believe me, the classroom becomes a place wherein children draw meaning, they draw inspiration, they in fact learn to question and sometimes the teacher is also put in a spot. How do we involve our students in learning? It's not so very easy, it's quite complex and for us teachers you know who have always or rather you know inclined towards traditional teaching coming into a different sort of teaching may find it very difficult but we need to understand that there are basic four C's of education and when I say the four C's of education they are communication, critical thinking, creativity and collaboration. When I say communication, communication here would mean dialogue and when I say a dialogue it's a dialogue between the teacher and the student, the teacher and the students, between a student and student, between the student and the community. So there is a lot of interaction, there's a lot of communication that takes place and children are potential communicators and that's the reason why we can involve them in the process of learning. We can involve them in the process of planning because they can ask us strategic questions or they can give us strategic information or they can give us strategic thoughts. The next one is critical thinking. Critical thinking is, um, is not concerned with you know, criticism as sometimes we do understand. It's not about criticism. It is all about how we conceptualize, how we apply knowledge, how do we apply the information that we have, how do we analyze, how do we synthesize, how do we look at a problem, how do we look at solutions to a problem. So open-mindedness, the ability to think clearly becomes a part of critical thinking. A simple example is we have moved away from our traditional crops into crops that, are, that have a commercial value. So why is it that we have moved away from our traditional crops, our traditional vegetation to, to crops that give us a lot of volume in terms of money? What is the reason? And here we can get our students to critically reason. Today, it's, it's said that we have moved away from agriculture, but efforts are made to bring us back again to our roots, that's agriculture. But if you analyze very carefully, look at the statistics of fertilizer that is manufactured and pumped into the system. Is the use of fertilizer good for plants? How does it affect plants? This is all things, these are all things that we can use to generate critical thinking and students can be involved very conveniently. The next one is creativity. We know that children are creative. They have a massive creative potential in them. 
And in fact, research says that children are so creative that they can come up with anything new, different and novel. And sometimes they'll be spellbound. But are we allowing this creativity to be nurtured and for them to exhibit this creativity? If left unattended, research tells us that creativity declines. So, we need to make use of the creative potential that our students have. And since they are creative beings, we can involve them in the process of planning. And the next one is collaboration. We know that children, they like to work alone. And at the same time, they would also like to work in small groups. Of course, yes, they would have their difficulties because they are children. They aren't grown-ups. They are children. And so they would have their squabbles. They would make a lot of noise. But in the midst of all these, they would somehow find an answer or they would solve a problem for you or they would complete some task or they would build some model. I remember uh, going to one of these primary uh, classrooms one day when I had time and uh, I gave them you know, pieces of aluminium foil, each of the same size and shape. And I told them, I said, my dear students, you have to perform a task. And so they were all curious and eager. And they asked me, so what is the task? I said, the task is simple. All that you have to do is you have to, you know, form different hollow shapes, making use of these pieces of aluminium foil. And trust me, what they came out with, was marvelous. I am sure even my adult learners would not be able to come out with the type of creativity that they displayed. All this was possible because of collaboration and therefore I once again say that the four C's of education that is communication, critical thinking, creativity and collaboration can be brought together and children can be involved in solid planning. So how do we go about with planning? So there are a few steps that we will look at. Uh, the first step is review of the learning target. When I say the learning target, it refers to a group of students who are reading. When I say reading, they are studying in a particular class and a particular division. Say maybe 3rd A or 3rd B or 4th A, 4th C, maybe 5th A, 5th D, whatever it is. So the teacher here is expected to review the learning target with respect to their basic understanding about the unit they are going to learn. So if they are going to learn about digestion, then what do they know about digestion? The experiences, ideas that they possess about or in relation to the unit. Many a times, children are familiar with many things. Their experiences are powerful and they come with these powerful experiences of the classroom and sometimes the teacher wonders as to how the child knows about these things. I was interacting with a, with a class three student for a small social gathering and I was spellbound when the child actually told me about the classification of plants. He said we can classify plants as trees, shrubs, herbs, creepers, climbers. He was able to cite examples this tells us that children have a lot of experiences which we need to harness. And what is their overall readiness towards learning? How ready are they towards learning? What are the learning habits of these students? Do they like to work alone? Do they like to work in small groups? What is their ability to think? As if I am teaching a particular class, then I know about my students. I may not know much, but yes, I have a working knowledge about my students. Are they able to decide? Are they expressive? So, we do know a lot of things about our students. So, this is about the learning target. So, we need to know basic information about our learning target. The second step or stage B or step B is framing the learning outcomes. Let us take a unit that goes by the title Natural Resources. By getting students to brainstorm and generate 
thinking and questions in relation to what are they going to learn about this particular topic on natural resources? What answers would they like to find out in this particular topic on natural resources? What skills would they acquire or develop through this particular unit? So we need to get students to brainstorm, to think, to find out as to how this particular lesson would make a difference for them. And so the teacher and the students together collaboratively would write the learning outcomes. So the teacher would not alone write the learning outcomes, but in collaboration with the learners would write the learning outcomes. So, example on natural resources. So these are some of the learning outcomes that I have listed. So the pupil learns about natural resources in Goa. So names the various types of natural resources. Categorizes natural resources as vegetation, minerals, sea wealth and animals. The pupil would cite examples of natural resources for each of the above mentioned categories. The child would describe also the climatic conditions needed for growing different vegetation or crops. For example, rice, maize, coconut and so on and so forth. Step tree is concerned with researching and planning. So now that the teacher has a relatively good idea of the learning target, and since the learning outcomes are also formulated or stated, the teacher can now involve the students in researching and planning this particular lesson. Now the responsibilities are to be assigned based on the observed abilities and interest of the learners to groups of learners. So the teacher has to be very, very careful when he or she is assigning responsibilities. So, from where can the student gather information? Now, since it's in relation to vegetation, natural vegetation and natural resources, the student can visit the library and gather a variety of information that could be in print media. Or, groups of children could visit the Directorate of Agriculture and Forest and gather first-hand information from them in relation to the types of initiatives taken by them to promote maybe a particular vegetation or types of crops. I know that uh, these departments are very open to children because this happens a lot in Goa. They can be consulting people who have expertise, very senior people in the community. They can plan a field trip to nearby places. And since we're talking about natural vegetation, they can be visiting a lot many places. For instance, sand dunes, where mining takes place, etc. Encourage the children to scout for a variety of digital resources. Today, we are living in a digital world. So are there any local documentaries that are available? Can we make use of Google Earth images? Or for that matter, can we even create resources such as images, video clips? Children today can do it. Encourage children to draw schematics, prepare charts, construct models. Children can also bring to the class samples of various minerals such as uh, bauxite, iron ore, and uh, you know, the place from where I come, we have two ores of iron, that's hematite and magnetite. Or for that matter, they can also look at manganese ore or maybe any other types of ores. So they bring samples with them. They collect resources. So what is the role of the teacher here? The teacher is supposed to determine the authenticity of the information and the trustworthiness of the resources that are gathered by the students. The teacher is expected to create a constructivist environment wherein the teacher allows the children to discuss their experiences and their ideas. The teacher creates an atmosphere of freedom for children to be themselves and make their contribution in terms of resources, ideas, suggestions. And 
the teacher can embed a lot of communication in, that, in the learning process. Present as many questions as possible to the learners. The teacher can provide opportunities for critical thinking. For example, today in Goa we say that coconut is a grass, but coconut is a palm. It's declassified. So, let the children think. Is coconut grass or is it not? And if it is, why is it? Encourage divergent thinking. How can we go back to agriculture? Can blood reports from the patho labs that we visit be wrong? What makes many of the forts stand strong till date? How has the construction of houses changed? How does cementing and paving gardens affect plants? How does overuse of fertilizer affect plants? So we can get our students involved in divergent thinking. So, facilitate creativity in the process of learning. Our children to explain what they have learned. So, encourage creativity. Make use of scaffolds. Scaffolds are uh, supports when we teach a complex concept. Use a variety of instructional media. Implementation. So the lesson is executed using a variety of strategies. So we can make use of cooperative learning, which of course you have learnt of. Discussion, field trips, ensure that the learning is embedded in reality. Make use of graphic organizers, concept maps and other templates. Formative checks during the lesson are very important. This reinforces learning and it also provides feedback to the teacher. Is my learner learning right? Is there a learning gap somewhere? Is the student making a mistake somewhere? So the teacher may also administer a written formative test to find out some of the difficulties that the learner is facing. So this can serve as a basis to even create ability groups. It helps a teacher to observe the students closely in the classroom. Ensure that all learners participate. So, we involve the learners in planning and we encourage learners to participate in the planned learning. Assessment and reflection is a very important stage. And here we are concerned with learners doing something. What was learned? What did I learn? Get students to reflect and so does the teacher. Both reflect about what was learned, what went well, what can be improved next time. Sometimes, you know, you will find children, small children coming up to you and telling you, Miss, I learned about um, plants today in my classroom. And uh, I have learned that plants have roots, they have stem, leaves, flowers. But the question is, uh, a teacher, do all plants um, have uh, flowers? Well, the teacher can help the child or lead the child to some resource. What needs do we still have now that the journey is over? So what are the needs of the learners that were left unaddressed? So learning can be assessed using multiple formats. And one of the format is a two-tier multiple choice question format or a performance test or concept maps. So assessment becomes important and reflection also becomes all the more important. We can make use of quizzes, which can be picture-based, text-based, video-based. Today we also talk about um, online quizzes, that's Wondershare and Kahoot. So a shrewd teacher would be very shrewd in finding out the performance of his or her learners. For example, here I have a map or rather a chart which shows the performance of three students, that's Russell, Vikas and Gurpreet. And if you look very carefully, T1, T2, T3, T4 and T5 represent five different tests. And if you look very carefully, the map shows us that Russell is showing a steady progress. Whereas Gurpreet has shown a progress and he's on the decline. So this is showing progress of the learner. Let me expose you to a strategy known as the KWL strategy, which is a powerful strategy that we as teachers can make use of. 
So K stands for what I know about something that I'm going to learn. What I know about plants. Then W stands for what I want to know. What do I want to know about plants that I am not familiar with? And L is concerned with what have I learned? To give you a simple example, I want to talk to my, my students about insectivorous plants. Example, the pitcher plant. And so, the learner writes, what do I know about plants? So the learner says, I know that plants have roots, stems, leaves, flowers, fruits, and all these type of things. What do I want to learn about this plant? And at the end of learning, what have I learned in this whole process? So, that is a procedure wherein the child writes what he or she knows about, what he or she wants to learn about the new learning, and in the end, the child writes about what did I learn? So you will see magic happening the moment you involve students. When students know that they are a vital part of the planning process, they will be interested in learning. Not only will students have a rich personalized academic experience, but they will also develop skills needed to be a contributor in the collaborative and productive learning community. Teachers will be amazed at the support and joy that can come when allowing students to create, collaborate, and communicate. So, if I put the whole experience in a nutshell, I would say that involve your students in learning. Let them know what they are learning, why they are learning. Encourage them to bring together resources, to pull resources, to make use of these resources in the classroom or outside the classroom when they learn. It will be, become a collaborative learning experience wherein all the four C's will be addressed and learning will become enriching. Thank you.